Good afternoon guys, welcome to Little Patch Kitchen here. Today I am canning pumpkin. Um, I've had some pumpkin go off in the shelf. Uh, so the reason I'm canning these ones uh, basically is because I am going to be using this in uh, things like curries mostly. That's what this will be used for. In the freezer I've already got large chunks of pumpkin for roasting. And I've also got dehydrated pumpkin as well to go into soups and stews and anything else I make it in. Which I can also still use in my curries. Uh, but I just thought it would be nice to have another way of having my vegetables done up as well. And it's the experience of actually doing it as well because I haven't canned pumpkin. And to see how the pumpkin comes out at the end of it. So I looked at my manual that comes with my canner. And in there it is asking for um, one inch size pieces of pumpkin. I'm probably cutting mine a little bit smaller because the jar is a bit smaller so I can get enough in the jar. Um, for my altitude it's telling me 10 pounds of pressure and it's a size 20 jar, sorry size 14 jar and a size 20 jar are equivalent to a pint size jar. I have that on the front of my book so I don't forget. Uh, so for pint size here, it's pressure canning for 55 minutes. So that's what the process will be, um, is pressure, doing it for 55 minutes. Now the instructions say to uh, boil these potatoes for, I think it was two minutes, uh, beef and hot pack. Now, I when I did my potatoes, um, which there will also be a video and or if I haven't released it yet, won't be far away on pressure canning uh, the potatoes. To that you're also supposed to cook them off as well. Now, I did the cold pack or raw pack version of that uh, because I had done some research into it and most people were saying that when they pre-cooked their potato that uh, it came out a little overdone and a lot more mushier. So I took the route of not pre-cooking my potatoes and basically the potatoes came out like you would have cooked them to make a potato salad. Uh, so the potatoes that I now have in jars, I can crush a jar and uh, use it straight away as a potato salad. Um, or I can, like I've done chip shaped ones as well. So I can, I pretty much can just tip them out of the jars and um, I have instant chips that I can just deep fry uh, once I've strained, rinsed and strained them off. So I've decided with the pumpkins that I'm going to go the same way. Pumpkins take less time to cook than a potato does. Uh, so I am definitely not going to pre-cook these either. Um, it, that will all be done in the process. Uh, my thoughts is that the time it takes for you to get the can, the canner itself, Heat it up and then up to pressure, that is plenty of time for the process of pre-cooking to be done. So, so I'm hoping that these will come out, uh, I think this, the cooking time on this is very similar to the pumpkin potatoes. So these will probably come out a lot more softer than the potatoes, uh, but that's okay because it means I can just put them into my curries um, or whatever else I'm putting them into and they are pretty much cooked, they're just heating up and they are going to be really quick and easy to use that way. So, so yeah, so at the moment while I'm talking to you here I am just cutting up my pumpkin and getting it all ready. I'm going to give it a good rinse uh, before I put it into the jars uh, and um, can get them all sealed and into the fresh cooker. So on my bench here, I'm uh, set up, ready to go with canning. I don't have all my jars at the moment here, but this is three of the size 14 jars I'm going to be using. Um, over here in some hot water, uh, I have my rings sitting in there. It just helps them um, soften up a little bit because they're brand new rings and it just helps them go on a bit better. better. I'm using the standard lids today. These are the goldy colour ones. Now, these have been pre-washed as well. Uh, if they, they can, when they get when you get them the new lids, they have a bit of a 
uh, oily film on them, um, which just helps them all uh, not go rusty when they're transported and stored. Um, then I have a pile of size size four. <laughs> in the wrong container that one so a size three lit clips so these are all size three clips rings and lids all sitting there i have my kettle it has a uh, tap sorry it, this one has filtered water or bottled water in it today you can use tap water but that is what i'm using as my liquid um, so then i've got my jars and then i've just got my little um, debubbling stick there and that should be uh, besides a cloth that I haven't got yet. That should be all the equipment that I need. Um, because I'm only really pretty much dealing with water, I'm just gonna give the tops of these rings a wipe with a uh, just a damp cloth. So the process is really simple, basically the same as any other canning job you're doing. Um, put your seals on first. And make sure that there is no, you can see there's twists in it. Just flick them round like this until you have no more seal uh, twist in them. And then just rub your finger around the top and feel if you can see, feel any more twists. If there's no more twists, they're good to go. I didn't mention these jars were washed in hot soapy water. They do not need sterilizing because they're going in a pressure canner. So that's my jar ready. Then all I'm going to do is put as much pumpkin into the jars as I can either get in the jars or I want in the jars. You can just use your little sticky thing just to push them down into the little gaps. So these pumpkin pieces are about the size that I would normally uh, use them when I'm using them in a... Uh, a meal so now these jars are requiring one inch headspace with the liquid so that is about all I'm going to get in there which is about a good amount so I'm just going to top my jars up to a one inch headspace which is about the shoulder here because uh, this top ring is where one in, one centimeter is so about the shoulder here is the one inch headspace now Everything really needs to be under the liquid. It just makes a much better product at the end. Stops things going browny. I'm going to need just a little bit more. There we go. Right, so uh, that's filling up the jar. Um, I'm just going to use a cloth here. Uh, you can use vinegar, whatever you want, but I mean, we're only really dealing with... Um, pumpkin water here you can add salt if you want but I don't add salt uh, pretty much due to dietary requirements uh, I always check my lids even if I know that they're new to make sure that there's no dents and that there's nothing sitting on the inside lid on clip on and then just make sure that the lid itself is sitting flat across here if they're not flat they may end up uh, not sealing um, or coming off in the canner itself. You only need one clip for a pressure canner. Um, the pressure canner will be pushing all the inside air out, creating that vacuum seal. So if you have more than one clip on your jars, they won't have it. Won't will have too much pushing down pressure for the releasing pressure. Right, so that jar is ready to go in the canner. And we just keep doing the rest of them. So I've run out of the size 14 jars and there's still space in the canner. So I'm using two size 20 jars here uh, to take up the rest of the space in the canner. Now, it is perfectly fine to use different size jars in your canner, uh, provided you process. So provided that you process the jars, the, the canner, for the, for the largest size jars in your canner. Now, these size 20s are equivalent to uh, canning the canning time as the size 14, because it's pint size. So these will still be the 55 minutes. Now, if I was putting in a size 27 or a size 31, I would have to go to a different time. 
I'll just have a look at the book. So it would be it would be a 90 minutes processing time if I had two jars in there. <laughs> to be silly. So if I had two jars in here that were size 21s or 30 watts, sorry, 27s or 31s, I would then have to process it for that extra 10 minutes. So, um, but the size 14s and the size 20s are both equal to a pint size jar. Uh, so I'm still going to be processing it for the 55 minutes. So I have all my jars in here. Now this canner, it requires a minimum of five liters of water to be put into it, which is what I put into it. And as you can see, it is above the lids of these little jars. Now, I know with water bathing and all the vicola uh, processing, this is what you would normally do. It's not an issue. Uh, pressure canning, pressure canning is not meant to come over the jars, uh, but due to the fact that they are small jars, a normal size jar, as you can see the size 20s are not underneath it, um, would not normally be underneath the water, uh, but I have to have a minimum, a minimum of the five liters of water in the canner uh, because I do not want the canner to dry out. 55 minutes of this thing boiling, uh, if I don't have the five liters of water in there, it could full well dry, uh, dry up with the water. Uh, so. To make sure that doesn't happen, I have got my five liters of water in there. I'll show you when I've finished up how much water is actually left in there, uh, so you can see how much of the water actually evaporates um, out of the the canner itself. So, so now I've got these guys in here. I now to get to get the lid on and get some uh, hot stuff underneath the cold stuff. You should be able to see now the size fourteen jars are now not completely covered. Um, so it's dropped about an inch worth of water and this is why it's really important to not reduce the amount of water that you put into your canner. When lifting them out, I always use something to support them. You see they're still bubbling and cooking away really nicely there. Everything is at the top. Uh, it should drop to the bottom um, over a time when it starts to, to cool down. So the pumpkin's actually been sitting here for two days now. I completely forgot about coming and checking that the lids have sealed. Um, so as you can see, our water level is pretty good. Um, hasn't really changed, uh, which means we had pretty much no siphoning. Uh, and that is due to taking my time and really just um, letting it do its process by itself. So I'm just going to slide these clips off. I like to slide them off sideways um, it just doesn't put pressure on the lids and then I'll just give them a, lift them up and see that the jar comes up with the lid so if any of these jars don't happen to lift up with the lid I know that it's not sealed they then will need to go into the fridge because uh, I won't reprocess anything because um, I think that it just comes out way too overcooked now so you can see this pumpkin um, it just looks like cooked pumpkin and it just looks really really nice it hasn't broken apart or anything like that so um, I think I'm actually probably depending on what this tastes like I might even actually look at doing a lot of my pumpkin this way it's quite easy just chop it up, put it in a jar, and um, put it in the pressure cooker. So, yeah, I'm happy with the way this has come out, guys. It looks fantastic. It looks like pumpkin, though the kids think it looked like peach because it's the same color as a peach. Um, but, yeah, I'm happy with this. The lids have all sealed. You can see they've all got their um, depression and their concaveness on the lids so they're good to go i'm going to let them sit here another day or two um which is generally what i do with most of my jars due to just not putting them away and um, it also gives me a second opportunity to just take a look and see if they're going to come loose without the lids on before i t date and tag what's in them and then uh, they go into the storage room where everything else is. So, all right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this one. I think that doing pumpkin this way is absolutely great because I'll just drain these out and then I'll either, I don't know, I can fry them up like that. I can 
um, mash them up. I can put them in the oven and just roast them off. Um, I can use them to make scones, pumpkin scones. It's all there. You don't have to pre-prep it. It's all good to go. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining me at Little Patch today and I will see you on the next vid.